Good morning, children. A very warm welcome to our remote learning session. I am Shailaja from Chet Vidya Mandir English High School and Junior College. Today's subject: English prose, Class Seventh, Lesson Four Point Three. Topic: The Red-Headed League. Video number twenty-nine. Let's get started, children. Arthur Conan Doyle. He was born on. 22nd May 1859 United Kingdom Sir Arthur Ignatius Conan Doyle KST JDL was a writer was a British writer and medical doctor as well children medical doctor he created the character Sherlock Holmes in 1887 when he published a study in scarlet the first of four novels and more than 50 short stories about homes and dr watson some of his movies were sherlock holmes homes and watson sherlock holmes and dr watson and more he died on 7 july 1930 in united kingdom here are the meaning children in the glossary i've given just go through before we proceed to the to the actual lesson clear children let's see now after this you'll be seeing first about the summary give a good reading here is the summary children just give a reading before we proceed to the actual lesson 4.3 the red headed league page number 80 Six. This lesson chapter or chapter adapted from the Red Headed League by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Page number eighty six in the textbook. Children, we are continuing. Part one, Mr. Wilson's story. When I called up my friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, he was conversing with a visitor who was an elderly. man with a fiery red hair homes introduced me to the visitor mr jabez wilson he was a pawn broker pawn broker means what children it is a person he is a person who lends money at interest so they he he will give money to people at some interest he will take every month when valuable things are kept with him till the lo loan is repaid he is also called as a pawn broker and there's another word for this mortgage m o r t g a g e okay so holmes asked him to repeat the his story for me he began by showing us an advertisement in a newspaper and it read as follows the to the red uh, red headed league there is a vacancy for a member of the league and the salary is 4 pounds a week for nominal services red headed men may apply in person on monday at 11 o'clock to duncan ross at the office of the league 7 fleet street the advertisement had appeared in newspaper 2 months ago and mr wilson's assistant vincent Spalding had shown it to him. So this is about an advertisement shown to Mr. Wilson by his assistant Vincent Spalding. Mr. Wilson liked his assistant Spalding. He was smart, efficient, and worked for only half the normal wages. But the assistant also had his faults. Every now and then he left work and went back into his into the cellar to develop photographs. photography was his hobby so that was the disadvantage of his assistant that every now and then he is in hibernation and he goes and does photography and spalding showed the meet, uh, the advertisement to mr wilson and explained to him that an american millionaire mr eskia hopkins had founded the famous red-handed league to help all redheads like himself and spalding urged mr wilson to apply for the job 
so the two men of uh, the two of them went to the address given in the advertisement okay they went to that address given in the advertisement fleet street was full of red headed people and mr wilson thought that with so much competition and he would not get the job so that was wilter wilson's uh, thoughts they were uh, that he would not get the job in, uh, job in such a competition he wanted to go back and spalding pushed through the crowd and took mr wilson to the office but spalding didn't leave him he took him to office there was nothing in the office but a couple of chairs and table a red headed man sat behind the table he was mr duncan ross a representative of the red headed league so mr duncan ross a representative representative he is a representative of the red headed league he was very pleased to see mr wilson and announced immediately that he was well suited for the job he shook hands with mr wilson congratulated him and told all the other candidates to go back after that mr duncan ross explained that mr wilson would have to be in the office from what are the timings from 10 to 2 okay 10 to if he left office he would lose the job he told spalding assured mr wilson that he would look after mr wilson's business in his absence and the pay was fixed at 4 pounds a week okay what was the salary 4 pounds a week and the work said and the work said mr wilson you have to copy out the encyclopedia britannica and the pay was very good and the work was light mr wilson accepted the job and began happy and he was very happy with that and began his work the very next day so he joined the work also the very next day mr duncan ross was there in the office to see that mr wilson did his work properly and did not leave the office he told mr wilson to start with the letter a mr wilson wrote diligently for 4 hours without leaving his place and mr ross would drop in from time to time to see that all was right with mr wilson at 2 o'clock he bade mr wilson goodbye and locked the door to the office of the office so after he joined he has you know uh, mr wilson was watched by the duncan ross whether he is doing the work whether he has any trouble and all so after that let's go to page number 88 this went on day after day mr holmes said mr wilson and on saturday i got my salary it was the same time same next week and the same week after after a few days mr duncan ross came in only once in a while and after ta- after a time he did not come at all so first he used to come a little more frequently then less frequently then more never used to come to see mr wilson mr wilson continued eight weeks had passed like this how many weeks eight weeks remember and i had written about abots archery etc and hoped that i might get on to be soon that is there about their work and then suddenly the whole business came to an end to an end homes asked yes sir this morning i went to my work as usual at 10 o'clock but the door was shut and locked with a note a little note nailed on it put it on on the door a note was there it said the red headed league is dissolved october 9th 1880 i was shocked i did not know what to do mr wilson went with a story i i made inquiries at the nearby offices but none of them knew anything about the league so the offices closed all of a sudden and mr wilson asked neighboring offices and all but nobody knew anything about it the rooms had been rented under a false name i went home and asked my assistant spalding for advice but he could not help me in any way i want to find out about the league mr homes who they are and why they played this prank upon me the whole thing is a mystery that is why i came to you i have heard a lot about you homes with found mr wilson's story very unusual he asked mr wilson this assistant of yours who 
first call your attention to the advertisement advertisement that what is he like so he, the mr uh, ohms asked how does he look like small stout with no hair on his face he has white splash of acid on his forehead i thought as much as said mr ohms is he still with you oh yes sir he said who said miltable mr wilson that will do mr wilson i can give you my opinion on the subject in a day or two today is saturday and by monday we may come to a conclusion that is what mr holmes told mr wilson i'll give you my verdict after two days by monday page number 90 part 2 what happened next dr watson's account well watson what do you think at all asked mr home after mr wilson had left i i make nothing of it i answered frankly home sat silently for some time and then invited me to go to go out with him we went to the square where mr wilson had a shop and homes observed the area carefully there were many shops and offices in the square and a bank just behind mr wilson's shop home spent some time outside and uh, the shop and thumped upon the pavement two or three times finally he knocked on mr wilson's door a young man opened the door mr homes asked him the way to the strand the assistant answered the question and quickly closed the door okay so he asked where what is the way and all and knock the door and he quickly close the door okay the assistant you know quickly close the door after that i said i'm sure that you inquired your way only in order to see him not him home said but the knees of his tra- trousers and what did you see what i expected to see this matter of wilson's is serious a crime is being planned but i hope that we can stop it the offices and banks will be closed for the weekend now i have to go and make some arrangements but i shall want you your help tonight come to baker street at 10 o'clock and bring your revolver also with pistol also i arrived at home's residence in time and there were two other men with him mr jones of scotland yard and mr merryweather a banker home's announced tonight we are going to hunt one of the smartest criminals in london sherlock holmes told now we left together in a carriage and reached road we had visited in the morning holmes told us to follow mr very merry weather who who is the another person who was with uh, mr holmes who led us through an through an iron gate and we followed him down a narrow passage after that we are in the cellar of the city branch of one of the main banks in london mr merryweather is the chairman of the bank and he will tell you why a criminal should take an interest in this cellar homes expected the criminals to act that very night immediately we had to we had to wait where in total darkness without making any noise to take criminals by surprise so they have but they have but one escape route only one escape route was there whispered homes that is back through mr wilson's house it was back of the wilson's house i hope that some men are waiting at mr wilson's door mr jones i have an inspector and two officers waiting at his door then we have stopped all the holes now we must be silent and wait and see so they were standing there and trying to see observe what is going to happen now okay children hope you are following now we waited silently for more than 1 hour it was a pitch dark in the cellar okay totally dark then suddenly a point of bright light appeared in the floor of the cellar then a line and a gash seemed to open and a hand appeared 
a broad stone turned over upon its side and left a square hole a boyish face emerged so how who came out a small boyish uh, small boy's face appeared there then the man looked about and came out of the hole he had a companion with him a man with very red hair the pair was none other than spalding who was that man he was spalding the assistant the assistant who guided mr wilson do you remember children yes listen up so spalding the assistant allies the criminal clay and the red headed mr duncan ross so mr red headed duncan ross also was involved in this spalding duncan ross and clay as soon as they climbed out of the hole sherlock holmes sprang out and seized clay by the collar so holmes he jumped and caught him by the collar you can see in the picture on the screen on the third page the other dived down the hole and disappeared clay took out a revolver but holmes hit him on the wrist and the revolver fell on the floor it's no use john clay said holmes we have caught you so i see but my friend has escaped he said holmes replied he cannot escape there are three men waiting for him at the other end he told holmes told that clay then holmes handed over mr clay to the policeman mr very weather said really mr holmes i do not know how to thank you you have foiled one of the most cunning attempts at bank robbery and the bank is grateful to you mr merryweather told mr holmes that he has toiled the plan of this robbery okay he has totally foiled it completely flopped it and it is no more going to take place page number 93 last page you see watson home said after we reached his home it was obvious from the first that the only possible object of the strange advertisement of the strange advertisement and the peculiar job was to get mr wilson away from his shop for some hours every day the red headed league league means what children it is an association of people you know association of people they are other people who are cooperating in that association so group group or association of cooperative members who come together to work together okay now clay and his red red headed companion wanted to dig dig an underground tunnel from mr wilson's house to the bank and then they would be able to enter the bank and steal the gold without breaking op open the doors of the bank using the tunnel they entered the cellar they planned to steal the gold and go back to mr wilson's house again through the tunnel and then get away but how could you guess what their motive was when i heard that the assistant worked for half the wages i became suspicious using mr wilson's description of his assistant i made enquiries and i found that he was the criminal clay so this is how he is trying to homes uh, sherlock homes is trying to solve the program i mean the uh, lesson okay the chapter the what is their plan trying to solve it why was he working in mr wilson's shop and his habit of going into the cellar every now and then i inferred that he must be digging a tunnel to some other building when we visited the shop i bet upon the payment with my stick to find out whether the cellar stretched out in front or behind it was not in front it was the bank on the other side of the house and guess what criminals had in mind when clay answered the bell the knees of his trousers were wrinkled and stained this this was the first clue which sherlock holmes got it 
when he saw the knee of Mr. Clay is completely soiled and stained. With that, he got an idea about the whole plan. Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes got the whole plan of their ideas, what are they doing, etc. He is totally not sure about their plan. It confirmed my suspicion and that he was digging. So with that, he came to know that they were digging because when you dig, you have to bend on your knees and then dig, isn't it, children? So this was the first clue he got. You know the rest of the story. So you reasoned it out beautifully. I exclaimed in admiration, Mr. Wilson told. In that way, the whole case, the plan of robbery was foiled and flopped. Did you understand the story, children? Just go through the lesson and revise the lesson, give a good reading, complete the exercises in the workbook. So, until our next session, happy learning, take care of yourselves. Thank you, children.